Well, uh, so the title of my presentation is the Babinite Principle for Plasmonic Antennas with Electric and Magnetic Response. And let's see what's that uh, about. So here's the outline. And uh, basically, uh, we are studying uh, plasmonic antennas, which are small metallic objects uh, that support uh, specific uh, modes uh, resonances of charge oscillations and those charge oscillations are related uh, to local fields and the fields uh, produced by plasmonic antennas can be strongly enhanced uh, in comparison to the behaving field so we are looking at uh, two type of such objects uh, bow tie and double antennas that support uh, electric field hotspot and magnetic field hotspot uh, respectively. I will show you that using uh, electron energy loss spectroscopy, we are able to perform a complete modal characterization of such structures. So we know what uh, kind, of, uh, kind of oscillations they support and uh, what's the local field uh, related to them. Then I will show you that uh, there's a nice way to independently engineer individual modes in such structures, in such antennas. And I will discuss how to image uh, the electric field and uh, magnetic field associated with uh, plasma oscillations. So that's for the outline. Let me begin with some uh, introductions. So, both eye antenna basically uh, consists of two triangular prisms and typical sizes, uh, tens or hundreds of nanometers here. And when you apply some external field to those prisms, they are metallic, gold in our case, then uh, the free electrons uh, in the metal will start to oscillate. The behaving field is at optical frequencies, let's say. And the charge uh, concentrates at the sharp tips and creates an induced field that is uh, can be considerably higher uh, than the behaving field and is also localized in a small area. And we call this a small area of uh, strong electric field uh, electric hot spot. Now we can go to a different structure that is double antenna. And uh, it differs uh, in this uh, BH that is now conducting. And instead of uh, charge concentration, the current is funneled through the structure. And you have a strong uh, current density just in the BH. And strong magnetic field forms around. So now you have a magnetic spot. Then there's a vertical field confinement that's uh, inherent to surface plasma molecules. Well, uh, another ingredient of our study is the Babinite principle. So you probably know it uh, from the theory of detection, and it relates uh, the response of, a, let's say, detection body in the form of obstacle or particle. And the complementary detection body of the same size and shape, but now it's an aperture in a otherwise uh, opaque, uh, opaque film. So we have complementary screens and uh, they produce uh, complementary response. What we need for our case is a vector field of formulation of the Babinite principle, and without uh, going uh, much into details, uh, you can say under some assumptions that the field is scattered by a particle and uh, by the aperture, which is complementary, that means the same size and shape, is also complementary in that sense that the electric field scattered uh, by the particle is related to the magnetic field scattered by the aperture and vice versa. And these are the final uh, final formulas that hold uh, rather well. Also, they are just approximate. Okay, so taking uh, taking into consideration also Babinite principle, 
we have now four types of antennas. In addition to bow tie, we have also inverted bow tie that now supports magnetic hotspot here. And in addition to the we have uh, the inverted double and that supports uh, the electric hotspot. So this is our playground and uh, let's see how, how these guys, how these antennas behave. So we fabricated samples. Now, we are basically using uh, TMM membranes as substrate, uh, TMM membranes with a thickness of uh, 30 nanometers and they are silicon nitride. We spot the gold on top of the membranes. The height of the gold is again 30 nanometers. And by focused ambient milling, we are removing uh, the metal at exposed areas uh, until we get uh, the desired final structure. And these are dark field EM images uh, of, uh, of four fabricated antennas, bow tie, double, inverted double, and uh, inverted bow tie and inverted double. White is gold and uh, black is just the substrate. Now we took the antennas and put them into scanning uh, transmission electron microscope and we performed uh, electron energy loss uh, spectroscopy. The principle is uh, quite simple. The primary electron beam uh, spans uh, the sample. Uh, some electrons uh, interact uh, with the antenna on top of the sample, and some of them uh, excite a plasmon and transfer a characteristic energy to the plasmon. Now, I said uh, that uh, our structures support the resonances in the visible uh, near infrared. So typical energy of that plasma resonance is uh, one to two electron volts. So part of the electron uh, lost uh, the characteristic energy and we record them uh, with a spectrometer. And uh, the probability that the electron loses uh, this characteristic energy is somehow related to the electric field uh, induced by plasma oscillations. So let's see what comes out. First, uh, for the bow tie antenna, we recorded uh, the loss capability spectra for the three specific points of uh, high symmetry. And we observed, let's say, three distinct uh, peaks. They somehow correspond to dominant modes, and some peaks also comprise several modes. Uh, you can uh, see uh, the similar response in the measured and calculated spectra. So the reproduction was quite okay. And now uh, the next step is to set, uh, set the spectrometer uh, to the energy of a specific resonance and to record the spatial distribution of the loss of probability. And now you observe uh, the uh, spots uh, corresponding, for example, to transverse oscillations like this, uh, longitudinal oscillations like this, uh, some higher modes. And again, the measurements are quite well reproduced uh, by, by calculations. How to interpret uh, these uh, maps? Uh, I will address this issue later. Well, so the first point is that you can look, uh, you can look at the same characterization uh, of a double antenna. So now, instead of uh, insulating a gap, we have a conducting bridge in the center. And what's quite interesting, you're going to see resonances. What's quite interesting is that some of the resonances, some of the plasma modes, are just the same as for the bow tie antenna. It's uh, better visible when you put uh, the figures together. So for bow tie, we were able to resolve uh, three modes. And for that below, we were able to resolve four modes. And uh, out of these seven modes altogether, 
there's only one mode uh, that's present in the below and not in both die. And uh, the other six modes from the heapers and are present in both uh, and Revolo antennas and also at quite similar energies. Now, why is that? How is it possible that uh, two very distinct structures uh, respond to uh, the same modes? This is the answer. These uh, figures here show how the charge oscillates uh, for the specific mode. And as long as there's no charge transfer through the bridge, the presence of the bridge is actually not uh, important. So if you transform uh, the conducting bridge into the insulating gap, not much uh, changes for, for these specific oscillations. On the other hand, uh, there's this uh, lowest mode of double O that includes uh, charge transfer through the BH. And now, of course, if we remove the BH, uh, these modes uh, cannot exist any longer and uh, it is replaced by some, uh, some other kind of the mode, which is not a result in our experiment. Okay, so. Let's have a look at the size speed because so far I have shown uh, the data for a single set of antennas for one pair. But then you can, you can also modify the wing length. That's basically uh, this, uh, this dimension, the wing length. And uh, if you record uh, the energy of plasma modes uh, as a function of the recipient recording length, and we can basically see that uh, these uh, three pairs of modes uh, are shared by both uh, the bow tie and double antenna. But then for the double antenna, there's this one extra mode. So when, once again, we have a charge transfer mode that's present only in the double antenna. And then we have three weekly coupling modes that are present in all of them. Well, uh, that uh, brings me to the idea of independent engineering of individual plasma modes, because uh, the point is that uh, when you modify the conductivity of uh, the antenna at a specific point where a specific mode uh, has uh, a nodal plane of a current, then uh, nothing, uh, nothing happens to the mode. And uh, the other modes that might have an antinode of current here, or at least uh, not zero current, they are influenced. And uh, if you take uh, this option uh, and use it smartly, you can independently engineer individual plasma modes. And this has many applications uh, in the multimodal effects uh, that. Uh, that comprise more than a single plasma mode, like directional scattering or final resonances. Okay, so now there's a time for <coughs> Babinet principle. Babinet principle predicts uh, complementary response of complementary antennas. That means also the same energies of the modes. And if you look at this, uh, this is indeed confirmed. So if you change bow tie into inverted bow tie, you are getting uh, the response, the resonance at the same energy. But what's different now is the field uh, distribution. And this is nicely shown here. Uh, so these modes uh, are present in both bow tie and inverted bow tie at comparable energies. But now uh, this mode uh, has uh, clearly different field distribution than this mode. Okay, so this can be, this can be used uh, just for changing the near field of the modes without changing the energies. And I will show you that uh, the Babinine principle can also help you with uh, measuring, uh, imaging the magnetic field of, uh, uh, of plasma resonances. So now there's actually time for the interpretation of uh, EOS maps. And this is a, a comprehensive uh, figure, which is uh, probably 
quite difficult to explain. So I will uh, I will go through it step by step. So first, uh, <clears throat> the interpretation of, uh, of the electric field. We take this capture. In our case, it's a double antenna, and we record a loss capability map like here for a specific mode. And now we selected the energy that corresponds to this longitudinal oscillations. And this screen shows the tech end that is a node, uh, nodes at the wings and an antinode uh, in the middle, in the bridge. And uh, the charge concentrates at the wings. Now, the recorded uh, loss capability is proportional to the induced field and to its out of plane component, actually, that is parallel with the direction of electron beam. Now, uh, of course, uh, this field is thrown uh, close to the concentrated charges, that is basically Gauss law. So you would expect a strong field uh, just uh, around the wings and the zero field uh, in the center of the, of the antenna. And if you calculate the electric field associated with this specific plasma resonance, it's indeed like that. You have maxima at the wings and uh, zero if you know the plane in the center. And now this calculated uh, electric field the out of plane component indeed corresponds very well to a uh, recorded loss capability map. So, the loss capability map actually shows you the distribution of the electric field and also the distribution of concentrated uh, charges. Well, how about magnetic field? Can we measure the magnetic field in the fields? Well, uh, the simplest answer is no, because it is insensitive to magnetic field, it's sensitive to electric field component. But when you consider the Babinet principle, which uh, allows you to flip uh, the electric and magnetic components in their response, it becomes actually possible. So we take a direct double antenna and we would like to image uh, the magnetic field of a specific plasma resonance here. So the uh, first step is to discard the antenna and fabricate an inverted antenna uh, where gold is replaced by substrate and vice versa. And then we record fields in the inverted double O that corresponds uh, to the electric field distribution at inverted double O. And this uh, corresponds to the magnetic field in the direct double O. So electric field here corresponds to the magnetic field here. And this is how, how it looks like when calculated. And you can see the uh, nodal plane just along the longitudinal axis of the antenna. And this nodal plane is also present in the experimental loss capability map. So we are actually able to visualize magnetic field and we observe the magnetic field hotspot just around the just around the bridge. Well, and now we can repeat uh, the process for other modes just by setting uh, setting the uh, right uh, energy for this mapping, and we are able to, to observe uh, the electric and magnetic field uh, for all three modes that we were able to resolve in our experiment. Another question is whether the correspondence is quantitative, uh, whether the magnetic field can be quantified. And the simple answer is no, because uh, the Babinine principle is only approximate. And uh, also the relation between uh, the EOS signal and the electric field is not that straightforward. It's not one to one relation, there's this integral. So, Qualitatively, it works fine. Uh, quantitatively, it doesn't work. So this brings me uh, to the conclusion of this part of my talk and uh, maybe of my whole talk because the time is over. So by EELS, we are able to resolve specific mode energies and near fields uh, in, uh, in 
plasmonics, uh, and I've shown this uh, for the example of two antennas, bow tie and double. We are also able to engineer individual modes by changing the conductivity of the antenna at specific uh, points uh, of uh, and uh, EOS allows you to image both electric and magnetic field. The imaging of magnetic field is quite straightforward, and the imaging of, uh, magnet, uh, of electric field is quite straightforward. The imaging of magnetic field uh, requires uh, Babinet principle. Uh, should be interested in details, you can read our papers, or you can contact me with your questions. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for an interesting talk. And because there are no questions, so I will have one. Uh, okay. What about, um, how, how can you go, how, how far can you go in, into infrared? What are the limits of your technique? Well, uh, for the uh, for EOS, uh, it's basically limited by, by zero loss E, uh, by the width of the Kainehi electron beam. And uh, this is something like, uh, 0.3 electron volts in our case, but the limit, because the zero speed is indeed intense, uh, the resolution limit is slightly higher. And uh, we can go, let's say, to 0.6 uh, electron volts with our setup. Of course, uh, there, are, uh, there are setups like Nylon with improved monochromator. And then uh, it's possible to go to, let's say, mid in head, something like uh, 50 milli electron volts. But we don't have uh, such setup at our disposal. Now, of course, with plasmonic antennas, you can uh, you can go to any energy you like, as long as you are below the plasma frequency of the matrix. So. The top limit for gold is like uh, 2.5 electron volt because of the onset of interband transitions. But there's no bottom limit, basically. Okay. I, maybe I, I can, but can, I don't know if it belongs to this talk or the previous one, but there is uh, some, Question appear. Your expression for EELS cross section ignores the finite thickness of the object. But no, I think that. I think that it doesn't apply. It to doesn't the, apply to that uh, because it somehow jumped it into that slot. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so I don't see any new questions. So are there any questions or maybe that the people who are directly. <laughs>